right, let's revive ourselves, refresh ourselves. Can we do that? Yes. Stir ourselves in the Holy Ghost. Get rid of all other ghosts. Father, we thank you right now. Let your presence feel. Kuri ala mala mala ma shikiri endare lama. Kiri ala mala ma shikiri endare lama. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you a new and living way has been opened for us, a way by the way of the cross, by your blood, by your finished work on Calvary, that today we can approach you, face, meet you face to face. Thank you for that privilege of knowing you, touching you and feeling you, and have the sense of your presence, the favor of your presence upon our lives. Lord, I pray that you take us deeper and deeper into you, that we will find a place so close to the heart of God. We will, we will be like Mary that will not just worship you from afar, but worship you close. Remove the veil. Remove every barrier, every kind of limitation, every kind of hindrance, that we can come running to you closer and closer. We just thank you for your freedom and privilege that you give to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.
All right, may be seated down. We're talking about the approaches to God, the approaches to touching God. The first one we talk about is prayer. The second was worship. Not in the way we understood, but the way that God wants to give it to a clarity to us. Number three, praying in tongues builds the inner man with stature. Praying in tongues builds the inner man with stature. Write down number one. Praying in tongues builds and strengthens the inner man. And matures him. Praying in tongues builds and strengthens the inner man and matures him. You are strengthened with strength from on high. So don't violate that. Tongues is not just a fill in the time gap. Let's pray in tongues. Faster is not here. Let's pray in tongues and gather the people. A lot of Pentecostal churches, that's what they do. They pray in tongues because they don't know what to do. The moment they found out what they can do in their minds, they switch off the spirit. Are you listening? Let's pray in tongues they do because they don't know what to do. But when you pray in tongues, one of the first things you've got to know is you receive strength from on high. You're building yourself in the most holy faith, building in the spirit, building your faith, building the inner man. It's the language of the spirit. So the more you talk, the more you mature. It's a clear sign of maturity. When you find your children can talk and communicate better and better and better, you know they're growing up. They're growing in values when they can communicate well. Not only communicate to you, but communicate to you in honor. At, at the end of the day, it's not the first impression. It's when you open your mouth. It's only when you start to talk that the impressions are lasting. People look at you, they think you're intelligent until you open your mouth. And whatever they thought is either confirmed or de denied. <laughs> First impression is proven when you open your mouth. First impression may be when they look at you, so people dress well. They act well, they, they give a handshake that is strong. And those of us who wear rings, we don't like strong handshakes. <laughs> Why? Because it'd be painful. Squeeze all the fingers together with a... Sometimes they dress well, but when they open their mouth, you can see you, you don't hire them at all. First impressions are confirmed when you open your mouth. That's why talking, the communication is very important. It's not how you look, it's not what you wear. It's more than that, it's what you say. That's why they say to Dr. Tundibakri, Tundibakri say, I'm only 60 kg. He says, sir, it's not what you weigh, it's what you say. It's what you say that shakes the world, it's not what you weigh. So praying in tongues builds our inner man with strength from on high, matures us. So the more you start to pray in tongues, the better it is, because it helps your spirit to become stronger. Helps you become stronger as a, as a man from inside. The more you discover the strength of the inner man, the less you rely on the outer man. People show off because they have nothing to show. But when the power of God begins to manifest from inside, you depend on that power of life. Out of your innermost being will flow streams of living water. Streams of living water is inside. Strength is inside. Glory is inside. Power is inside. Everything of heaven comes into your spirit first. So when you start to pray in tongues, you begin to digest it. 
you begin to connect with it, you begin to connect all the missing dots. Yeah. Are you listening? Yes. That's why the reason you need to pray in tongues more and more is this, because there are so many things God deposit in your spirit, yeah. it's not connected. Yeah. It's not connected in your mind, it's not connected with your words, it's not connected in your heart. There are a lot of deposit of God inside your spirit. So there are a lot of things taking place inside, a lot of seed that's not germinated yet. God is, every time you touch him in the spirit, things are happening in your spirit, but you don't know. Your mind is cut off. But when you engage your mouth and begin to pray, before long, your mind begins to decipher. What is, no, no man knows what is in the spirit of man except his mind. No man know what is in the mind except the spirit. So the mind and spirit are connected together. Yeah. Do I need to show you the scriptures? Yeah. Yes, one. The rest of you can go home and talk to 13. <laughs> I said, do you need me to give you the scriptures? Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. One Corinthians chapter two verse ten and eleven. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit search all things, even the deep things of God. Even the depths of God, the Holy Spirit search. The right? So you don't need to know just the shallow things, but even the deep things. God search all things, the Holy Spirit can communicate that to us. Verse eleven For who among men knows the thoughts of a man? except the spirit of which is in men. Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. So the thoughts and the spirit are linked together. Say the mind. The mind. Say the mind. mind. is a window for the spirit. The spirit. It's not window 2000. The mind is the window for the spirit. So everything that happens in the mind will come on the screen of the, everything that happens in the spirit will come on the screen of the mind. Like when you press the keyboard, what appears will be on the monitor. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. yeah, I'm talking to you technology. <laughs> Every time you touch the keyboard and press, the words that you press come systematically. If you press capital, it's capital. Yeah. Press numbers, is numbers. Are you listening? Yes. And you can press for the programs, you can scroll down with the mouse, so whatever you do with that appears on the monitor. The same way, what the Holy Spirit does in our spirit can appear in our mind. Yes. If the connection is right. Yes. If your mind is the mind of, of Christ or a renewed mind, then it can appear immediately. Yes. But if yours is an unrenewed mind, every message I send in there, you shot down. In the mind of the, in the mind of the natural person, he cannot understand anything. Yeah. 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 That's how you read the scriptures, and it never gets into your head because the mind is blocking the entrance of the spirit. But when you start to pray in tongues, it brings peace to your mind. steals the dog from barking. 
all the noise, all the noise of the world, all the noise of facts, informations that are inaccurate, voices of all kinds of people, voices of demons, all that voices begin to stop. So when you start to begin to pray in tongues, something supernatural happens. Are you listening? You start to pray in the spirit, you find that you bring peace. God will guard your mind with peace. Begin to guard your mind with peace and give you understanding, peace and understanding. That's why tongues is important. All right, you can hold your mind in such a way it's connected. So that whatever God put in the spirit, will begin to manifest itself in the mind. Yes. And before long you find yourself, your mind being arranged so that you are not deranged. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so that your mind is in a place where it's aligned, adjusted. Begin to brought in alignment, bring the mind to the obedience of Christ. Bring every thought captive. Hold it as a captive so that you will not get out of control. You will be sentenced to do the right thing. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. Can you understand this? Yes. So do we need to pray in tongues? Yes. You've got to pray until your mind and your, and your spirit are linked together in a supernatural way. Are you listening? Yes. That's why tongues is important. The first one, tongues, must, you must pray in tongues so that your inner man will mature. Right? Sorry, I forgot to give you number two. Number two, this is what it means. You got to pray in tongues until your mind and your spirit are aligned. You got to pray in tongues until your spirit and mind are aligned. So that any activity of the spirit will straight away be deciphered in the mind. Hey, look, it, it takes time to set it up, but once you set it up, it's easy. You have a television, you have an aerial or satellite. Nowadays, you don't have aerials, you have satellite. You connect the satellite to your TV and make sure that you have a proper remote control that con controls all the channels. Once it's set up, you press channel 4, you get channel 4. Press channel 5, you get channel 5. Press Astro, you get Astro. And you can even steal from Singapore. <laughs> Those, that's why in, in Johor you have all the high towers, aerials that are high up, because we get free channels. Thank God for Singapore. <laughs> the higher they go, the more we follow. <laughs> so those things do happen. So if your system is set up, whatever happens there, wherever it is, it can be connected. Yeah. Your live telecast in Brazil, all you got to do is connect to the channel. No matter how far it is, even if you're not there, you, you feel as though you're there. You can shout gold here while they're shouting gold there. <laughs> It's called live telecast. Are you people living in the real world? Okay, let me ask, do you have a TV? Do you have one that is connected? Do you have one that is connected? You're, you have upgraded from, from aerials to just satellite? You know, during the early, early days when you have Aerials and the crow is sitting on it. <laughs> you find that you have to chase the crow away because it affects your reception. Michael and I can understand that. The rest of you are not in part of this generation. You don't know what it means to have an aerial. But but this is a situation. If you if you're well connected, then things do happen. If it's not. And nothing happens. You wonder why God is speaking in heaven and you don't know. Because you don't have a TV. You don't have a satellite. You don't have a proper system set up. Nowadays you can even receive it through the computer, mobile phone. You can have a walking thing. But it works on the same principle too. Are you listening? Yes. So if God is speaking in heaven, 
the thing can happen into your life. You can feel the same in intensity. They say it's not the same as being in Brazil. When you watch the match, it's true. But at least you don't miss out. Are you listening? God can allow us so that we can have a channel in our lives so that everything that God is saying can come to us. So that's why tongues is important. You've got to align your mind and your spirit together so that everything that God is saying in heaven can come to you. Do you want to know what God is saying? Yes. Don't go and look for a prophet. Yes. Prophets are sent to you. Yes. Prophets are sent. If you want to know what God is saying, go talk to Him. If prophets come along your way, then they are a blessing. They confirm what you receive. Are you listening? God is good. God is gracious. If He wants to send it to you, then He will send it to you. If you don't want to send it to you, you get it yourself. You're never going to be lacking at all. Are you listening? But a lot of people say, what, what, what is God saying to me? What is God saying to you? What is God saying to you? It should be said to you. Do you have a word for me? Yeah, here's the Bible. There's a lot of word in there. We must not go looking for like soothsayers, treat the prophet like soothsayers and, and those who carry pigeon around. I mean, there are a lot of men in Malaysia, there are many Karili prophets. They are quite dangerous. In fact, they are very dangerous. And most of them live in Colombo. <laughs> you, you need to guard yourself because when these things do happen, you don't realize how dangerous it is. Because people are giving everybody a word. Some prophets are giving car park prophecies. They are passing pieces of paper around. If God wants to speak something, let him speak openly. Why must he hide in the car park? And you know a lot of problems happen in car parks in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Snatch thieves. Some of these thieves can steal your dreams. Are you listening? So praying in tongues will help you mature. The inner man will align itself. His mind and his spirit will connect together. Are you listening? Yes. Write down number three, praying in tongues will tune your spirit to the frequency of heaven. Praying in tongues will tune the frequency of your spirit with the frequency of heaven. When you start to pray in tongues, the frequency of your spirit will change to hit the frequency of heaven. That is your door. Every one of us have different doors. You cannot have where I'm going. Where I go, you cannot come. But where you are going, I cannot go. Because that's your life, this is my life. There are certain pathways in the spirit that is just specifically yours. Certain privileges cannot be accorded to everybody. Even though he may be your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, but what is accorded to them is special. Are you listening? Yes. So there are pathways in the spirit. Say pathways in the spirit. Pathways. When, when you start to pray in tongues, that frequency in your spirit becomes more and more aligned to the frequency of heaven. So that when you open your mouth and begin to speak, heaven will respond immediately. So in your life, you always will have breakthrough. Are you listening? The connection of heaven must never be lost. Are you listening? If you have this connection in the spirit, when you open your mouth and begin to speak, the doors in heaven are open. It's just like the Alibaba principle. Alibaba and the 40 thieves. 
The forty thieves came and they robbed and they went and hide in the cave, put all the loot in the cave. They said a certain word that opened the door. Yeah. Alibaba could say hallelujah, nothing happened. <laughs> but he said exactly what the thieves said. The door began to open. Would you think it's about forty years now since Alibaba came into the show? Over oh, forty years? More than forty years, right? My father was talking about Alibaba. It's the first voice activated door. <laughs> they make voice activated door forty years later. It's not even voice. Now they don't have voice activated, they just have remote frequency activated doors. Like your gate opens to a certain frequency. You change the frequency of your of your remote, your door won't open. Yes. They're right. Your car's also the same. It's, it's just amazing what technology started in with Alibaba. <laughs> God was trying to get our attention because there's a voice activated door. Are you listening? So when you start to pray in the spirit, what happens is that your spirit develops a frequency. When you open your mouth, all the doors that need to open for you will open. That's why when you wake up in the morning, what you got to do is tune your frequency to the spirit and open every door. So that you wake up in the morning, you walk through the doors. Good morning. Are you awake? Then you got to pray in tongues with what the frequency of the Spirit. Don't pray, God protect me from accident. Send two angels to sit on my bonnet. <laughs> One sit on the steering wheel. You cannot drive with somebody sitting on the steering wheel. <laughs> Cover my car with blood. You know what will happen to a car? It will look, it look like Ferrari red color. Why all these Pentecostal prayers we pray? Because of confusion. If you're expecting the devil, you definitely meet him. Because you're virtually prophesying your ideal. You're expecting only doors to be opened, then doors will be open. Are you listening? Unless the Lord tells you there's going to be your trouble and you go, and he takes you through the trouble, then it doesn't matter. Because he's the one who told you, but don't expect a kid trouble there. Are you listening? Yes. If trouble comes, you know how to handle it, but don't prophesy trouble. Are you listening? Yes. You've got to open your mouth and release the frequency of the Spirit so all the doors that need to open that day will open. That's so why you set the day in order. This is the day the Lord has made, not making. You are making your day. He has already made the day. And He only adds good things to us. He doesn't add sorrow. But the problem is, because so many negative things happen in our life, we always expect negative to happen. If it happens, we have the answer. But why, why, why prophesy it on your pathway? Why give life to the devil? Why give life to error? You know, please pray for me and ask, ask God to help me to keep my heart pure. Don't ask these kind of things. You keep your heart pure, it's your heart, not God's heart. You're not a sacred heart. Are you listening? It's your heart. If you determine so, so it will be. That's what Amen is. is. Amen means let it be so. Let it be done to me according to your word. So you got to understand, if you choose the frequencies in your spirit and God tunes that and you open your mouth and start to speak it, all the doors will open. Are you listening? Yes. I don't wait for trouble to come. I destroy trouble in the beginning of the day Amen. by not giving it life. Yes. You start to speak the frequency of the Spirit and the doors will open. Every door that needs to open will open. So you just walk through the door. Yes. Who's the door? Christ is the door. Yes. The frequency is given to us. That's why he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Yes. You'd be surprised. If the frequencies begin to open, the, all the doors will open. So don't wait for the day to bring trouble. The day must only bring good. Yes. All right, because God is good, He only knows how to give according to His goodness, yes. according to His nature. So He gives all good things to all those who seek for Him. You believe that? Yes. Talk to me, you believe that? Yes.
That's why you got to open your open your heart up to God. Let Him tune the frequency. Amen. Amen. So everything that pertains to your life, like when you pray in the key of G, all the doors in heaven with the key of, with the frequency of G will open. It's called the tuning fork principle. So if you sit in this place, there are 250 people, maybe 300 people here. You sit in this place and you operate your frequency. The door that will open for you won't open for me. Only you have access to it. Out of 700 people in working in that building, you open your spirit and begin to pray in tongues. The frequency of the spirit into, into that building will be tuned to your frequency. And God can hear you. You have direct access to him and he to you. That's why he gave you the spirit. That spirit came from him. So he tuned the spirit so you can pick up your mobile phone anywhere. Trace you in any part of the earth. That's why sometimes, you know, you watch television and watch certain movies. They can, you take a mobile phone and you call. They can trace it in any part of the world. You just got to be online for a few, few minutes and they can trace your call trace a call from Russia in Siberia in one Ulu village, remote village, and they can trace by satellite. If technology can do that, God can hear you cry. Even more, not faint. Can you pick up the call? Can you hear what he's saying? Can you, you know, they don't have to read lips. They can hear the sound of everything. So the frequency of your spirit is your personal access. But well, if you pray in tongues, da, 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 you, there's no frequency, it's only headache. <laughs> because da, 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 is called mission gun. Chandelier, 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 there's a lamb. Shangri-La, Shangri-La, it's a hotel. Kiki-Lala is a brand. I had one person here spring, pasang kaki, pasang kaki, pasang kaki. <laughs> that is a rude thing to do. <laughs> pasang kaki. Like the man called his wife, Hitachi. The frequency of the spirit must be so sharp so that everything that is yours will open up. Have, heaven knows what to release. You can stand in the town of Moa and begin to open your mouth and pray. The, only the doors that the, to your frequency will open. You cannot open unless the frequencies are right. So that's why you have to be right inside. You have to be tuned inside. It's not external. Can you imagine if we can do that? Tune our frequency to so well so that when you open our mouth, all the doors that need to open will open. So that's why we don't strive in prayer. We don't struggle in prayer because we know if we say it, it will happen. Speak it, it will begin to take place. That's why Paul said, the word I speak to you is both in your heart and in your mouth. You can go into the heart of man bypass his intellect go straight into the heart of man straight into become the language until they say what you say until they repeat what you repeat until your message become their message until your prayer become their prayer until what's in your heart becomes what's in their heart that's why the frequency is powerful when God gave us the Holy Spirit and gave us the language of tongues it's powerful it's not how long you pray it's how well you tune Is how well you tune your spirit. You want to know how to do it? Yes. Write this down. Pray aloud. Pray aloud. Pray frequently. You know what it means to pray aloud? Until you can hear it. Not until they heard it on the third, third row. 
until you can hear it. Sometimes we think if you pray aloud is better. Not loud so that all the neighborhood can hear. Some neighbors don't like us because we pray so loud. They're chanting. What are they chanting? Because they don't understand. Because you go do 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 for one hour. <laughs> even war, even the first world war has ended. Yours is still continuing. Pray aloud. Pray frequent. Pray frequently. That means pray many times. Not just once a day. Pray many times. That's why shorter breaks are better. Sometimes you pray too long in a single day. Sometimes then you don't pray the rest of the day. You can get yourself into trouble. Do frequently. Number three, do abund pray abundantly. Pray abundantly. Abundantly means take out everything. Kuri andari andara alabashe. Take out more in a single moment of time. Like when you turn on the tab, you turn on the tab, tuk, tuk. That's a desert tab. Because in five minutes, only five drops. But you get abundance, you say, when, but when you turn on the tab, the pail is full, your clothes are wet, and the whole floor is wet. Because so much of it comes out at a short, short period of time. That's why when you pray in tongues, launch everything out. Don't, don't be miserly. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. We're not doing exercise. The problem with many of us is like we, we, we just don't know what we're doing. Pray in tongues. Then somebody is honing next door. <laughs> open, open the window, shut the window. Another time, Korean. <laughs> Mosquito. You're not going to go anywhere. Pray abundantly so that so much will go out in one single moment of time. Amen. Amen? Right down number four, pray, pray until it becomes a language. Because the Holy Spirit gives us abundance of language, gives us utterance, gives us words. If you know only five, five words of French, you cannot speak to a French speaking person. There's not much to go for a language. And then some people. You know, it's, you try to speak to them, they have, don't have the language, and then you give them the language. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant. Is this what you mean? That's what I meant. You, know, you give them the vocabulary, and then they say, yes, that's what I need. So they don't have vocabulary for communication. So when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit can give you vocabulary. So that you can say adequately. You can express all you want to express. Sometimes you... How many times you pray in tongues, you feel not complete? You cannot deliver everything in your heart. Why? Because you don't have enough words. You have four, four French words and you're trying to speak in French. It's not going to go very far. Are you listening? If I speak my Tamil, you won't understand. Because I have limited choice of words. But they're good words because I studied for exam. But if, if you get a person who is fluent, and I'm talking to the person in Tamil, I have to borrow words from him. Because I cannot adequately express. Are you listening? In the same way when you pray in tongues, you cannot adequately express what's the language of the Spirit until God gives you words. So when you start to pray in tongues, until it becomes a language, you have enough words to communicate freely. So by the time you pray in tongues, you not only edify yourself, but you know you have communicated well. You walk out of the presence of God feeling satisfied. So many times we pray in tongues, we walk out of the presence of God feeling dry in our throat. Thirsty. Some of us have a sore throat. 
what did he receive approaching God, touching God, sore throat? <laughs> That's not the reward. The reason is because we don't have enough vocabulary. Pray until it becomes a language. Are you listening? Pray until it becomes a language. Write down number five. Pray and discern. Pray in tongues and discern. Not listen, discern. Pray in tongues and discern the heights and the depths of the flow of the Spirit. When you pray in tongues, learn to descend the height and the depths of the flow of the Spirit. Sometimes when you pray in tongues, you feel, feel real strength and you feel it's going up. Sometimes you feel it's not going anywhere. Sometimes you feel it's going to the roof and falling on your head. Sometimes you feel you're hitting resistance. You've got to discern so that you can gauge the flow and do the right thing. If you're, if you're praying in tongues, you hit a wall. That's, that's ability to discern. Then you know what to do. Or else you'll be speaking to the wall for a long time and feel frustrated. You feel in the spirit you're praying and you feel resistance. All these things help you understand. When you pray in the spirit, that, that day when you pray in the spirit, you feel free. After a short while of praying in the spirit, you just want to worship, sing in the spirit. Then you realize, hey, something is happening. God is getting nearer. You're no longer having any resistance. There's no longer any demonic attacks or oppression in the air. But you're feeling free. You feel you can worship freely. You can sing in tongues. You can sing in the spirit. Because you discern there's a good flow, a spiritual dimension breaking out. Other times you pray in tongues, you find your spirit become aggressive. You feel like you're fighting somebody. Are you listening? Sometimes when you pray, you feel like you're fighting somebody. Sometimes you, when you start to pray, you, f you feel sad, you feel sorrowful, you feel grieved. So all these things help you discern. The height, the length, the, the, the depth, the breadth of the flow, the measure. So you start to measure your own river. Are you listening? So you start to measure your own river. So that by all the things that happen in your spirit, you can measure your own river. You know why you need that? You stand before a congregation of 1,000 people or 10,000 people. You send your river out. You can feel whether you have adequate strength to touch the world. If not, you'll be standing here thinking that you, you, your water is enough. Have you gone to a dry area and pour a pail of water? Within, within a minute, the water is gone. After a short while, after 10 minutes of preaching to the crowd of 1,000 people, you have nothing left. You're mumbling and fumbling because your water is inadequate. If you know how to measure, then you know this is 10,000 people, how much water have to flow? A lot of people who want world ministry, they don't know their world is coming to an end. <laughs> if the river don't flow. It's a river that makes glad the city. It's a river. It's not you. The river must flow from the temple. So our spirit must become stronger and stronger. Are you listening? Our spirit must become stronger and stronger so that we can measure the flow of life, how much water is flowing. If not, if, if the whole area is a waterless place, and you're sending your river, after a short while, it will be hit back. Instead of you touching them, they will touch or oppress you. If you go to war, you must know with 10,000 people whether you can take over the, the country. You've got to measure. If you cannot measure, you're going to go in for failure. Are you listening? Number six, pray. Pray in tongues. What number are we? What is number five? Pray in tongues until... Pray in tongues and discern the height and the depth. 
Have you got it? Yes. Number six. Pray in tongues and discern the change of atmosphere. Pray in tongues and discern the change of atmosphere around you. Pray in tongues and discern the change of atmosphere around you. Like if you pray in tongues, nothing else happens. The atmosphere doesn't change. You only edify yourself. When you start to pray in tongues and the atmosphere change, you know something is approaching a spiritual dimension. Anytime you pray in tongues and things have the atmosphere around you change, means spiritual dimensions are in operation. When you feel the atmosphere change and you feel you can worship, God is getting nearer. Can you follow this? You cannot find this in any book in Glad Sounds. Are you listening? You cannot find it in salvation even though there is salvation. Are you listening? These are things you got to learn. You got to establish this as part of your life, the foundation. These are approaches to God. When you pray in tongues and the atmosphere in your room change, you feel you can worship freely. God is getting nearer. When you pray in tongues and the atmosphere in your room change and there's a lot of oppression, demons are getting nearer. When you pray in tongues and the whole atmosphere change and you feel, feel overwhelmed and feel sorrowful, are you listening? Feel overwhelmed and sorrowful. But yet at the same time, there's an intensity of hope, then you know intercession is coming. Then you know prayer is the only thing that will drive this through. Are you listening? When you pray in tongues, I'm trying to think of a few other examples for you. When you pray in tongues and you feel the atmosphere change, atmosphere change and there's violence, then you know demonic powers are engaged in war. Like when you pray in tongues, you feel like you're praying aloud, praying aggressively. Are you listening? Sometimes it's oppression, other times it's warfare. Sometimes you pray in tongues, you feel like a spirit of guilt and condemnation in all your past comes back. It's a demonic attack on your own mind. Are you listening? Yes. You never know. Some people feel pray in tongues and they feel empty because the mind has been harassed by the enemy. When the mind and the spirit are not connected, you feel empty. Are you listening? Yes. So you pray in tongues. How many of you prayed in tongues and feel empty before? No. Two, three. The rest of you don't know what I'm talking about. Let me ask you a question again so that when you put up your hands, there will be circulation of blood. All right, it will help you. Are you ready? Yes. How many of you, when you pray in tongues, you feel empty? Sometimes when you pray in tongues, you feel oppressed. You know why? Because there's an attack of the spirit. Demonic spirits are either attacking your mind or attacking your spirit, shutting one from the other. So there's no expression. Are you listening? So when you pray in tongues, the atmosphere change, you know some things are taking place, so you can discern. The leaves are flying in the, in, in the wind, and you can feel the breeze on your face, then you know something external is happening. But tongues is very powerful. When you start to pray, the atmosphere change, hey, you better know. You better know. Are you listening? All right, write this down. Let me help you with number seven, since it's a perfect number. When you pray in tongues, you feel physical indications of needs. Let me explain this to you. Sometimes it's like a word of knowledge. As you start to pray in tongues, suddenly you feel your knee pain. But you've been praying for somebody. 
Suddenly God will begin to remind you, word of knowledge, show you that somebody is sick, somebody is having a knee condition and you push in further then suddenly God will give you the name. You'll be very surprised that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit can use our body, our mind, our soul, our spirit, He can use any part. Sometimes you feel like there's a pain in your back. Are you listening? You can pick up physical indication, especially if you're going for ministry. The more you pray in the Holy Spirit before you go on a journey, you can pick up a lot of physical things. They are, that's not your pain. That's an indication of pain. By the time you finish praying, all these things are gone. So that you can use these tools when you go and minister and say, the Lord showed me, just wait for the right time so that the word of knowledge can be operational. At the right time, you can speak to the right people at the right congregation. Sometimes God can warn you two weeks, three weeks, four months in ahead of time. Sometimes God speaks to me a year ahead of time when I pray for the next GLS. I know exactly. Sometimes God showed me exactly the sitting arrangement of the people. Like two years ago, I could see the people sitting in the right place where they were sitting. Not you. Somebody else. I knew that exactly where they were sitting. I could see the picture of it one year ahead of time. Sometimes God revealed them so that it makes, makes things clearer for you so that you can do what you need to do. Are you listening? So God can give you MRI and X-rays. CT scan too. You can scan the city. All right, I lost you here. So when you pray in tongues, the frequency of your spirit must be tuned to the frequency of heaven. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to the main point. What number are we? Number four. Right, right down the frequency of the spirit is also the master key to open up hearts. Of your partners in destiny. The frequency of your spirit is also the master key to open the hearts of your partners in destiny. When Paul was speaking, the heart of God opened out the heart of Lydia to listen to what he was saying. She persuaded him to come into the house and stay. That's how you meet the right people. I said that's how you meet the right people. I was doing multi-level for a while. But doing it with church people is the most difficult task and assignment. Because you enroll them into multi-level, they want you to make money for them. <laughs> what I realized is this. The frequency of your spirit will open the frequency of the right people. And when they connect well with you, and they live right with you, the resources will begin to flow. The danger about connecting with wrong people is that they short circuit what you do. That's why a lot of contracts, a lot of partnership fail, even Christian partnership. Yeah. One of the most saddest part of partnership is Christian partnership. Because when the partnership fail, they leave the church. Yeah. They form partnership, it didn't work out, the pastor suffer. No. The church suffer. That's why if you want to form partnership, it must be the frequency of the Spirit. And it must have proper guidelines, proper rules. People sometimes, they are so hurt and offended by one-sided things that happen, and they leave the church. You are leaving destiny. Yeah. You're destroying for the sake of some pot of porridge and some gold and silver, you're leaving your destiny. The frequency of our hearts, for those of you who are not married, let me tell you this. If you change the frequency of your heart, you marry the wrong man. Okay. 
okay, all right, let me take the pressure off you. <laughs> if I change the frequency of my heart, my congregation will change. The type of people that will come to drink from the type of water I sell will be different. If I lower the standard and preach a different gospel, different people will come. And I get the crowd, but I lost what is mine. At the end of the day, God's not going to judge me for how big a crowd it is. The crowd will make me weary. It won't be a joy anymore. Because you send out the wrong frequency, the wrong people are there. You send out wrong frequency, you attract wrong people. Because you send wrong signal. Hey, if you drop a handkerchief, somebody pick it up and give it to you. If for me, I'll pick up the handkerchief and throw it in the dustbin. <laughs> and I'll tell the person, don't spread germs. <laughs> are you listening? But other people will fall for it because wrong signals are going out. That's why you, you must never change what is God is doing inside your heart. Never deny it. Never destroy it. Never allow what God has put in your spirit to change. Because if, when that change, what's going to happen, the type of people you attract will be different. You know, Lot was walking with Abraham for so long. He was walking right until he went to, went, until he went to Sodom and Gomorrah, he went to Egypt. And the frequency of his spirit changed. Then he got closer and closer to Sodom. How can you be a righteous man and dwell in Sodom? And not only dwell in Sodom, but became an elder of the Sodomites. You're sitting at the gates. To become a leader of all the crooks, you have to be, a, you have to be better than them. It is not possible for you to be a pastor of all those disgruntled people unless you are disgruntled yourself. It's not easy to pastor the rotten sheep unless you smell like them. To me, it amazes me again and again because the frequency of the Spirit is what will bring you the right partner, the business partner, the life partner, the partners in destiny. So if you're working remember that. If you're doing business, remember that. If you're working on projects, remember that. The right people are going to be attracted to you only when your frequency is right. You, you keep changing the frequency, the people are going to be confused. Nobody will get near to you because today you are Johnny, tomorrow you are Sunny, next day you are Tommy, next day you are whatever. You keep changing the frequency of your heart. You're sending out all kinds of funny signals. Nobody will know. Are you listening? Yes. Some men send out wrong signals. They attract men. They said, I didn't mean to attract you. <laughs> You're just me. Be very careful. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. This is the problem with us because it keeps sending out wrong signals. Pastors keep sending out wrong signals by giving, sending wrong message. They change, they play according to the gallery, what the people like to hear. They, let, they speak what the people like to hear. Before long, you, you bring in all the funny people that you don't like. You know what's going to happen is you're going to make your whole life miserable. Better have the people that you can send the right frequency. That's why Jesus said, will you leave me also? He did everything possible to get rid of them. <laughs> One of the first things you do in the 90 days of leadership is try to get rid of as many as possible. For staying for all the wrong reasons. Because if 10 people stay for the right reason, you are a powerful force. Because to get 10 people to synergize together, 10 competent people to synergize together is a powerful force. Mathematicians tell me and physics, physicians tell me that when Jesus chose 12, he chose the right number. There seems to be a multiplication of 12 that goes on and on and on and on that never ends. 
the multiplication of 12. I don't know how I don't know how it computes because I don't have the Einstein's brain. I just have Jonathan David's brain. But he seems to say that the multiplication of power, as it goes down, is the fastest rate, and the dimensions of power. So he chose 12 competent men, not not bankrupts. He chose 12 competent men. Every one of them was successful. They were not just ordinary fishermen. Go read your Bible carefully. They were professional fishermen. Peter, James, Peter, Peter, James, and John, they were not ordinary. They're not just ordinary fishermen. They're competent fishermen. They're competent in the business. They knew people in the, in the high places. Are you listening? John's mother was somebody. So she would come out to Jesus and tell Jesus what to do. So she must be like Mary. Are you listening? So all of them had some measure of status in society. So they was powerful. But the frequency of the spirit, say the frequency of my spirit, will attract my partners in destiny. If I change the frequency, the wrong ones will come. If I tune the frequency to heaven, those who come to me will carry the spirit of heaven. This is for strength. This is for synergy. Amen? Write down number six. That's now number four? Was it number four? Number five. Write down the utterance, number five. The utterance given to you carries the message. Of the spirit. The utterance given to you carry the message of the spirit. I should give you the scripture Romans. Romans chapter 8. The utterance of the Spirit carry the message of the Spirit. Romans 8 26, 27 Are you there in the scriptures? In the same way the, the Spirit also helps our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we should but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. Look in verse 27. He who searches the hearts knows what the, mi- what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You'll be very surprised that when you start to pray in tongues, the message that God is speaking from heaven rings louder and louder, clearer and clearer inside you. Because the, when you start to pray in tongues, what is coming out of your mouth is according to the will of God. According to the plans of God, according to what God is saying, according to what God is declaring. So when you start to keep praying in tongues, the message will become clearer and clearer the will will become clearer and clearer. The conviction will become clearer and clearer. So before long, you can streamline to what God is saying and doing because it's God who works within us, both to do and both to do and to give you the power to do His will. God who works within us so that you can will, both to will and to do His good pleasure. That's, That's the reason why the early 
pioneers when they lay hands on somebody they begin to pray in tongues because in that language of tongues within a split second they can decipher what the Holy Spirit is saying and they start off that's why you find the old traditional people those who are pioneers in the move when they pray in, pray in, pray for anybody they pray in tongues first because in that is the will of God as, uh, aligned in that the will of God is made known so when you pray in tongues say after me when I pray in tongues I pray say it aloud when I pray in tongues the will of God is encoded in the utterance so as I keep speaking I keep declaring the will the message the inspiration the mystery the understanding the insight will fall in place like you, you're praying for, for your business, you start to pray in tongues, before long, a seed drops, yeah. a vision forms, a conviction stays. And if you put all these things together, you know exactly what to do with your business, to go or not to go, to start or not to start. It's not just praying in tongues and let God hear you. It works more for you than for God. It is a language of the Spirit given to you so that you can connect with heaven. Yes. But first it must adjust you, yes. align you, yes. so that you can sound out. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. If you're not placed in the right place, then the light cannot shine as a beacon. Yes. But if it's established well, aligned well, then things will begin to happen. Yes. Can you say amen to that? So, the, so, so when you pray in tongues, let's say you pray for one hour, in that one hour, you pick up a seed of inspiration. Something about the job. Let's say you're praying for your job. Something about the job. Be careful of those above you. That's one word. Are you listening? Yes. Then manage your finances well. Another word, after 15 minutes of prayer, another word came to you. Then you saw a vision. Or somebody's trying to sabotage you. Then you keep praying. If you, if, if you have prayer life like mine, within an hour, I can get a lot more things than most people can. So before long, before I step in, I'm clear on what to enter. Are you listening? Yes. Sunday morning, I enter the service also the same. When, they will, when they're pressing in, I press in to find out exactly what I need to do. Are you listening? Yes. International conferences is the same. That's why by the time you start the first night, you set the pace for the whole two weeks. I hit it so hard on the first night of GLS. Make it so clear that by the time anybody is going to talk about anything, they have to talk within what the God has said. Because the whole panorama view of what God is saying from A to Z is already in there. Nobody can get out of context. You set the things in the world. You, you set it so strongly in the spirit nobody can shift it no matter how strong you are this is a pattern you cannot divert from it and it's because of uh, people building then those who come in they start to build into it are you listening? Yes. that's what builders are this is the approved blueprint yes. nothing else is approved if anybody steps out of it everybody knows but when they start to build inside, you can see line upon line, precept upon precept. Are we hearing? Yes. That's why it's good for churches to follow this kind of pattern. Sometimes if you are more courageous as a pastor, as a leader, you should get to the front and begin to direct the whole service before the song leader takes over. But sometimes the problem is I find that if I do that, the song leader doesn't know what to do. They had to throw all the songs away because we need people to be like that. That's why we allow you to rise up because we have time to work with you. We don't want to kill our sons, we want to grow our sons. If I step into the platform and say, this is what God is saying, let's pursue this angle, the song leader will be completely confused because they spend all, all night, all afternoon praying 
and all sun, all Saturday preparing and all the musicians will be confused. But if, if you want to do that, then you have to work with them. So the pastor will have to come on Saturday nights, work with them, labor with them, and then work as a team. But what we need is this. We must be able to have a strong church that can understand the flow and dimensions of life. Amen? Let me give you one last one. What number are we? Six. Praying in tongues. Often releases the word of faith. And sometimes is the source of the word of faith. And or sometimes is the source of the word of faith. Praying tongues often releases the word of faith. Or sometimes it's the source of faith, source of the word of faith. After you preach on Sunday morning, get into the closet. This is for pastors and leaders. Pick up your message and begin to pray in tongues. Let the message run through your head. Hear what you're hearing, hear what you're preaching. Any member can do that too. You can take what the pastor is preaching, pray in tongues, and let the message run through your head. You'll be surprised what will happen. Out of that, God will give you a proceeding word. Yes. They will launch you into something yes. very powerful. Yes. Can I repeat this in English? Yes. If you can remember your pastor's message, this for all. Or you can remember your message, if you're a pastor. And you start to let that preaching run through your head as though like a cassette recorder, MP3 is running. Or, or video is playing. And you start to pray in tongues. You'll be surprised that in, as the two things run concurrent, run parallel, you'll be surprised what will drop into your spirit. If you, if you want to know the next message you preach since the last message, do the same. Because God will give you a proceeding word out of what He spoke the last time. This is how I've been preparing and preparing because you cannot jump from pillar to post. But you go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. You've got to take the message. If you want anything to help you, take the message that you are hearing and keep speaking, keep speaking, keep declaring, keep declaring in your mind while you pray in tongues. Some seed will drop that will initiate you. Do you know how my message became yours? The same way. You keep listening to the tape again and again. Something dropped in your heart that suddenly kicked off. It became yours because it's in your heart. Same seed but different tree. Are you listening? Yes. That's why those who listen to the tapes, listen to the CD again and again and again, they picked up seeds in for, for them to sow. Yes. Suddenly they carry a certain message, a certain dimension of what God is saying. And that seed will become part of your own life. Yes. Amen? Yes. Is tongues important? Yes. Let me give you a last one. Number seven, praying in tongues. will bring the right provisions of grace and power for the assignment. Praying in tongues will bring in the right provisions of grace and power for the assignment. Acts chapter 4 
verse 33. The Bible says the place that they were praying was shaken. And with great power the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and abundant grace was upon them all. If you start to pray in tongues, lift up your voice with one accord and begin to make declaration to the Spirit and the frequencies become tuned. What heaven has will come upon your life. In verse 29, Now Lord, take note of the threats and grant that your bond servants may speak your word with all confidence while you extend your hand to heal. Something in heaven will become released. All you need for the assignment will be released. Let me challenge you this morning, this afternoon. The more you start to pray in tongues, you release for yourself all that is needed. The more you pray in tongues, you release for yourself all that is needed. If you need strength, it will come to you. Are you listening? You need provision, you need grace, you need power to testify, it will all come to you. Amen. So you're stepping into what you're building. Alright, let me repeat this in English. You cannot live in a house you didn't build. You have to pay the price. If you build, you can go and live inside. Is that right? If you don't build, you cannot enter. There's nothing to enter. So when you start to pray in tongues, you're building. What are you building? You're building for yourself your own resource, your own storehouse. The place where they were praying was shaken. It is at that place they testified. It is at that same place that out of that place they began to have great power, great grace came upon them all. It's called a storehouse principle. You keep doing that, your church will become strong. The grace that you need, the, the power that you need, the provisions that you need. There was no one needy among them. Financial release was there. Powerful release of healing signs and wonders and miracles were there. Supernatural dimensions, the place was shaken was there. The word was there. Every word that they need, God was doing all kinds of things. They, was, they were hand in hand with God. Are you listening? And suddenly they raised another man called the son, son of encouragement, Barnabas. Are you listening? A new generation begin to break out. I believe without a shadow of doubt that God is giving us access. Access in the spirit world by the language of tongues. It's not just praying because we're Pentecostals. We're praying because of Pentecost. Because that's our own way to glide ourselves into the things that God has for us. Amen? Send your feet. Let me pray for you. As I pray for you, I want to pray that God will add utterance. Yes. Because if there's no utterance, then you never be fresh. Yes. I recently did a, what is called a blood ozone therapy. They take some of my blood, oxygenate it, put some vitamins inside it, and pump it back into my body. It's just like fresh air running through a dry building. Suddenly all the other cells said, I also want to be fresh. <laughs> the cell memory start to rejuvenate itself. They said, oh, Papa, you look fresh, handsome. <laughs> because you've got to give life back. Yes. Are you listening? When God gave us the Holy Spirit, He didn't just give us a bird. He gave us power from on high. He didn't give us a pigeon. He gave us the dove, gave us fire, gave us water. No, He gave us power from on high. That's why if you allow the Holy Spirit to manifest inside you, something sovereign will happen. Amen? I'm praying that God will give you utterance, train your spirit, to go to the next level. Yes. I'm telling you, a lot of things will be corrected in your life. Yes. All the struggles of trying to live a Christian life, 
to be holy, not to eat sugar, not, now they tell you don't eat pork, now they tell you don't eat carbo, what else I need to let go? All the struggle will come to an end because only natural things or how to live, how to overcome temptation, how to, how to have my mother-in-law stay with me for an hour, a whole month. <laughs> Will God give me the grace to tolerate her and all these struggles you're going through will come to an end. You start to live life on a higher plane. Yes. The mundane things will not be your, portion, your problem anymore. Yes. You will fight at a higher level. Yes. You will be walking on a higher level. Yes. I'm telling you friends, by the time I finish this ten and you, you just spend the year doing these ten things, Forget about apostolic church. Forget about church unusual. You will become the church unusual. Amen. You will become the church unusual. Everybody is singing of going to Zion. You will be Zion. You'll be very surprised because I've been seeking God to find a capsule that really will turn the thing around. The most high potent tablet or capsule or liquid that you can take. And I came out with this stand. If you hit it hard, hit it strong, build on it, spend a whole year working on it, your whole church will change. I challenge you, you're a pastor, you're a leader, and for those of you who are part of Malaysia, and those of you from our networks in Indonesia, Philippines, and Singapore, if you take this and build it into your life and into the life of your people, your growth will be beyond limits. Your children will grow, your finances will grow, your mind will grow. Every aspect of your life will grow. Just find these approaches before God and connect. Yes. All of a sudden things will change. Yes. Your struggle with sin will be a past history. Oh, yes. Your struggle with worries, finance and fears, yes. relational problem will come to an end. Yes. Why? Because you'll dig deep the wells of life. Yes. If you can touch God, you can touch anything. Yes. If you can bring God's attention and God can get you can get God's attention and when you open your mouth, God listens to you. The world will listen to you. The world will bow and fall. Amen. Let me pray that God will give you utterance. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for a supernatural touch of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I pray for a life, life to begin to flow in our spirit. There will be words of life, words of the spirit, words of utterance. The right words. You said we should not be concerned. We should not be care worried. We should not, we should not be afraid when opposers and enemies attack us. At the right time, you will give us the right words. The Holy Spirit will be our leader. The Holy Spirit will be our teacher. And so today we call on the Holy Spirit for a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost. Come right now. Come right now. Feel us with a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost. That this be our day of Pentecost. Shiri andare andara la 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 ba 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 ba. Let this be the day of Pentecost. Puri ala mala 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 ma. Puri ala mala 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 ma. Shiri andare andare andara. Receive your own Pentecost. Receive your own Pentecost. Shiri ala mala 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 ma shikiri ala. Lili ala mala 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 ma. Puri ala mala ma shiri andari andara la 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 ma. Yeah. 
Holy Ghost, let there be fresh life, fresh stirring of the Holy Ghost. Kiri ala mala 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 mala. Kuri ala mala mala siri andari 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 la 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 mala. Kuri ala mala 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 mala. Shiri ala mala mala mala. Kuri ala mala 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 shiri andari 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 la la mala. That's right, that's right. Let the spirit, let the spirit rise. Let your spirit rise within you. Kiri ala mala 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 shiri andari andari ala la la. Kuri ala mala 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 mala. Let the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Let the fresh wind of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Riala Mala Mala Mala. Shiri Ali Andari 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 Thank you, Lord. For behold, the Lord is measuring another thousand cubits for you, another thousand cubits of water that you can enter in. No longer will you be dry, no longer will you be bound, no longer will you be oppressed. But wherever the river will go, there will be life. There will be life on both the shores. There will be life everywhere the river will go. And the river is going to flow from your temple in a fresh new way. Wherever the river goes, death will be swallowed up. Darkness will be pushed away. And the Lord is going to give you tremendous victory because there's a new, new dimension of life that is going to flow out. The abundant life that he gave to you is not only the life of Christ, but the life of the Spirit. He came to give you life and life abundantly. Life on a higher plane. Life on a supernatural plane. Life on the heavenly plane, life that is not limited, limited by the natural environment, but that like the days of heaven on earth, life is going to be fresh. I foresee in the days ahead, the quality of your life is going to change. The quality of your, your life is going to change. Every aspect of your life is about to change. Your finances are going to change. Your health is going to change. Your mind is going to change. The friends around about you are going to change. The kind of people that you attract will change. 
God is going to go and bring about a whole change of life. You'll be so glad that there's, there's a new beginning for you. A greater future is at, at store for your life. I can see that wonderful things are going to happen. I can see the seed that God is sowing is going to sprout and become, a, become an orchard, become a place where all things will become new again. Behold, the winter for you is over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. Welcome a new season. Welcome to a new season. Welcome to a new season. The season of dryness is over. Welcome to a new season. A season of breakthrough. A season of freedom. A season of abundance. A season of great peace. Hallelujah. Put your hand and thank him one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise and thank him. I keep feeling that God is closing an old chapter of an old book. Not an old chapter, opening up a new chapter is closing an old chapter of an old book. You know how when Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, he said to them, everything that God approved in the past, in the laws and the commandments and the Ten Commandments and the priesthood, he has brought it to nothing. He rejected it because he fulfilled it in Christ. I feel like this. I feel that some things are being fulfilled in you that the old is now becoming obsolete. Get ready for the new. Get ready for the best. Better than the best. What used to serve us before is no longer useful. What God is giving to us new. A new and living way. Are you ready for that? A new way to live, a new way to think, a new way to carry ourselves, a new measure of stature that God's going to give to us. The old is gone. If the old is not going to be renewed again. The old is not going to be revived. The old is absolute and gone. Even how great it was in the Old Testament. Gave them the priesthood, gave them the priest, gave them the temple, gave them the articles, gave them the ark, gave them the tablets of stone. All that great thing, God considered it obsolete. Yes. Not that he didn't respect what he did. He said it's no longer serve his purpose. The man had come. That's why rituals will come to an end. Yes. A, lot of, a lot of natural things that you've been doing and struggling will come to an end. Because when the man Christ becomes form in you, yes. it's the beginning of a new order. Yes. When Christ becomes form in you, then you start to operate differently. Yes. If not, you have to use a lot of clutches the step of on use so many things charms and superstition and faith in other people's faith and you cannot stand but when the man Christ become form you have the foundation yeah. of a new beginning amen, amen. you happy yes. you're glad you're here yes. I'm glad you're here amen. at least I have somebody to talk to because when things are happening, you want to desire, one of the first things to happen is to happen in Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. Wait and see. This year is going to be the beginning. Yeah. Uh, changes is going to take place. Next year, yeah. next year, speedy changes will take place. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. A lot of things they say is not working. It's collapsing. God is going to bring about something new. Yes. It's going to be change in the government. Yes. I'm not going to say about change of the government. That it's going to be change in the government. Yes. Things are going to change so drastically that you'll be so sure. Yes. And in the midst of all of that, Christians are going to rise. Yes. Christians are going to be placed in high places. Yes. Strategic places. In spite and despite of all that they attack the church, they put the right people up there. I'm telling you, this government is going to eat up its words. They'll have to say that there's no way we can stand against this God. Paul stood against his God, but he turned the table around. In spite and despite of all of that, they're going to put Christian in high places. The 
because there's no answer. If you don't have the answer, you're going to find more and more people, Christians rising up higher and higher. A lot of Christians are in high places in other parts of the world. By the right time, conducive time, they'll come back. Many will return because this nation is not going to go down. It's going to get better and better. Amen. We believe this good old Malaysia will be a good old Malaysia will be gone. The old Malaysia is gone. The new one is rising. We're calling for a new Malaysia. Speaking for new Malaysia. You, you'll be very surprised. This message is in the hearts of non-Christians all across Malaysia. It's not only in the church. Everywhere, people are looking for something new to happen. Looking for who can lead, who can guide, who can help. That's why Christians must take their role. Education is going to change for more. We're, we're not just determined to run a school here without changing education. We're not doing it just for ourselves. We started with that. But that's not our final goal. Our final goal is to change everything in this land. Just like what God has given to us in the spiritual aspect, in the family, we've got to change everything. So when the river flows, things are going to change. Amen? All right, I'll let you go for half an hour.